friends, welcome to Solids. Today we're gonna to talk about normal stress and you're thinking, hey, I already have that in my class. Totally stressed, man. No, this is something different, okay? Normal stress. So what is normal stress? Stre normal stress is a stress due to a normal force. And we know about normal forces, don't we? So you guys remember what happens when you cut a beam you must have a M, N, V, right? So that N, that normal force is what causes normal stress, okay? And normal stress is the stress due to the stretching uh, or the compressing uh, uh, axially of a member, okay? So along the uh, axis of the member. Okay, normal stress is given by this. Sigma is equal to P over A. So sigma is normal stress, okay? So what is normal stress? Okay, normal stress, or we should say what is stress, right? What, what is stress? Stress is a measure of intensity of uh, a force, okay? So how intense is it? We talked about this back in statics. If I step on your foot, right, big load, but it's distributed over a big area, not very intense, right? But if somebody with stiletto high heels steps on you with even a little, little bit of weight, right, the, the, the pain is very intense. The force is very intense. It's over a very small area. So we get this equation here, P over A. So what does that mean? Well, really, that's, that's really force over area, right? Force over area. And if you really want to be specific, it's really the normal force over the area, okay? So P over A, you'll see it written P over A in the book, but it's a force over an area, and that force is N that normal force, because that's the one that's either stretching you or compressing you, okay? And so what are the units for this? Let's talk units for a second. The units would be something like, since it's force over an area in the English system, in freedom units, right, it would be something like um, pounds over inches squared, which is gonna give you PSI, right? pounds per square inch, uh, or you would get something like um, kips per inches squared, which is KSI. You might see KSI, that's kips per square inch, or kilopounds per square inch, whatever you want to call it. In the metric system, which is what we all should be using, I agree with you, is, is uh, newtons over meters squared. What is, a, what is a newton over meter squared? What is a newton? Do you remember what a newton is? A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, right? And a newton over meter squared is a pascal, or you might call it a pascal, okay? Um, then there's one more that's very commonly used, and that is this one. I like this one. This is my favorite one, okay? Newtons over millimeter square, and the way I remember this is, Newtons over meter square is Pascal. This one has an extra M on it, so where does the extra M go? Right there in the front, okay? And that's a mega Pascal, okay? And the other thing in, that you really need to remember in solids, well, for anything really, is that kilo, right, is times 10 to the three mega times 10 to the six, and then giga, whoa, times 10 to the nine, right? And then it, and it goes on from there. But these are the ones you'll see most commonly in, um, in solids. And you also might see micro, right? Micro. And micro is given with a mu, and that is times 10 to the negative six, okay? So those are some things that you might see. Those are just a little, a little quick unit review uh, for solids because 
In solids, if I had to say what is the number one thing to make me successful in solids, and it's real simple, it's look, pay attention and show your units, right? Make sure all your units cross out, that this divides into that and that goes into that and it leaves me with, okay, I see, right? And show your units in your work on your paper, not just on your answer, but in your work. And you'll see me doing this. I'll show my units because is it 10 to the three? Is it 10 to the six, right? And does this cancel out? And then I got to make sure I have the right number of decimals. It is so important. If you'll just do your units in your work, your grade point will go up a whole 10 points. I promise you. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> that's stress, normal stress, the intensity of the force. And this is the equation that we use right here. Okay. So I'm going to put this over here because as we go along, I'm going to start adding equations over here. I'm going to kind of keep a little running equation sheet that we're using in here in solids. Because in statics, we made up our own equations, but in solids, there are a lot of equations. And so this is going to be our first one. Sigma normal is equal to P over A. Okay. So there's equation number one, and that is uh, normal stress. Okay. All right. So let me erase this. And I have a little problem for us to use our normal stress on right there. Let me erase this. Okay, so this problem says if the diameter of the cables is 20 millimeters, find the normal stress in each cable. You know what that looks like? That looks like a statics problem, doesn't it? That looks like if I went in and I did a free body diagram on joint B there, I might be able to figure that out. And that's exactly what you have to do. That's why statics is so important because every solids problem starts off with a statics problem. Every one of them, okay? So here we go. Let's go up here. Here's that joint B. And let's say that the light, the light is 100 um, newtons. Okay? 100 newtons. So, what do we have over here? We have 100 newtons. And we have, what is this guy? 50 degrees and 30 degrees. And we'll call this guy, what, AB? And this guy is um, BC. Okay, I'm gonna put a T for tension, okay? And then uh, let's break those two vectors into components. I got my red pen somewhere here. Okay, so one component there, one component there. This guy has two components as well. And this is um, TBC cos 50, TBC sine 50, TAB sine 30, and TAB cos 30. Okay, there's everything broken into components. So I should be able to write my equations, some of the forces in the X, some of the forces in the Y. Okay, here we go. In the x direction, I've got TBC cos 50, and what else do I have? Minus TAB cos 30. And in the y direction, I've got TA, uh, TBC sine 50. And then I've got TAB sine 30. And then I have minus 100. Okay, let me get my calculator. This looks like we can simplify this. All right, so I got cosine of 50, which is 0.643. And then the cosine of 30 is 0.866. There's equation number one and equation number two is the sine of 50, 0 0.766, 0 0.5 TAB equals 100. So there's two equations, two unknowns, and I've got a little handy dandy system solver here. Let's see if we can get this. Here we go. We got 0 0.643, enter, negative, 
0.866, enter, zero, enter. If y'all haven't learned how to use this system solver on your calculator yet, you are missing out. 0.5, 100, and this is an FE approved calculator. It's the TI-36 Pro, okay? And it tells me that TAB is 87.93, And T, what is the other one? Uh, oh, I did that wrong. No. This is not AB, that's BC. This is BC. I bet y'all are going, what are you doing? What are you doing? I got it, I got it, I got it. We're all good. And the next one's 65.3. So now I use statics to find the tensions in the cables. That's an easy little old chapter three statics problem. So what do we got to do now? Well, we got to use this because they asked us to find the normal stress in each one of the cables with a 20 millimeter diameter. So one of the things, other, other things I need to do is, let's, I'll blow this up. Here's the cable. The cable has a diameter of 20 millimeters, which means it has a cross sectional area. That's what that is right there, that A is the cross-sectional area, right? So the area is equal to pi r squared. Y'all ever wonder why pi r squared and cake r round? No, wait a minute. Pi r round and cake r square. Okay. <laughs> ah, math joke. Math joke. A bad math joke, but it's a math joke. Okay. So pi, that's times 100, isn't it? Okay, we know what that is, don't we? 300 area is equal to 314.16, of course, and that is millimeters squared, okay? So we needed that for our next equation. So here we go, sigma, sigma BC, okay, the normal stress in cable BC is pretty easy. It's just force over area. Okay, and the force, we've got that 87.93, and that's Newton's divided by 314.16 millimeters, which is equal to, uh, I don't know, 87.93 divided by 314.16 is equal to 0.279. Eight, which is really the 0.28, isn't it? And that is, what is that? That's Newtons over millimeters squared, which is, we just did that, megapascals, right? Or you could write that, or, or you could write that as 280 pascals, <clears throat> okay? Now, yes. That, that cable, that cable is way bigger than it needs to be to hold up that much weight, okay? Way bigger. That's okay. We'll talk about that a little later. So that was BC. The next one is AB. And for AB, it was 65.3 Newtons divided by the same cross-sectional area, 314.16 millimeters squared. And so that guy is 65.3 divided by 314.16.208. That one was 0 0.280, that one's 0 0.208. Or 208 pascals, okay? And that is how you find the normal stress, okay? So it's just P over A, but the step one is find out what is the P, right? So there's the P's, okay? And there's the A, the cross-sectional area, and that's all there is to that, okay? I'm sure we'll work a harder one next time and see if we can figure that out. Okay, stay tuned.